let's play some Triangle Wizard. Triangle Wizard is a fairly non-traditional roguelike that really owes more to Geometry Wars in terms of its look and feel than it does to games like Rogue or NetHack. So let's just jump right in and create a character. Names are randomly generated. We could have it randomly generated a new name, but why would we? Melon is the perfect name. Permadeath can be turned on and off. Of course, I'm going to play with it on because this is a roguelike. For race, we're going to take Dark Elf. Bit of a glass cannon, but the extra sight and resistances, along with the ability to run away, goes a long way towards survival. For class, we're taking Ocular Neophyte because it has strong offensive spells in Shadow Bolt and Death Ray, and it can cast them very quickly. And for God, we're going with Stout Heart for that extra little bit of survivability. So, let's see how Melon the Dark Elf, Ocular Neophyte, who worships Stout Heart, does. Now here we've got your standard opening text. It's your basic story. Bad things have been happening around Castle Everdoom, which you'd expect because it's called Castle Everdoom. You gotta go in, find the Nameless One, defeat him. The Nameless One being down very many staircases. And here's the game. That triangle with red, green, and blue around it is you, the Triangle Wizard. Squares like the one I'm hovering my mouth cursor over improve your various spells and stats. The various ASCII characters you see on screen are your friends and foes. Dollar signs are of course money. Got some W for wolves on our side who took care of some hobgoblins and they're going after some baby wyverns now while we run around and collect some gold. We're gonna go pick up a few copies of the spell Death Storm. Spells in this game have ammo. You can see in the lower right we have three Death Storm at level one. And once we use those up, no more casting Death Storm. Luckily, your starting spells regenerate usages, so you're not going to just run out of spells. We got an ally, I do appreciate his help. And on to the next level, those being the downstairs. Let's talk about the interface. Lower right, you can see what spell you have selected, how many you have, and what level it is. The blue bar is your spell casting cooldown, the red bar is your health, the yellow bar is your jump cooldown, uh, we'll do some jumping later. In the lower left you have the green bar that's your EXP, your level, which is right now level 1, your health potions, and your gold. Picked up some Crusade, that's a nice spell, it, it's literally the ride of the Valkyries. So we're getting a nice army behind us, so we're not really having to cast a lot of spells. There's summoned buddies taking out a bones file. Now I'll switch my spell to death ray. It's gonna be pretty much my standby direct damage spell. It's just, well, a ray of death. It does what you'd hope it does. Sends out a big purple ray of making things die. The little white bar over the blue bar is your spell regeneration. See, we have 104 copies of Death Ray, and now we have 105. So we're basically never going to run out of Death Ray. We have a second good offensive spell, which is Shadow Bolt. It does a little less damage, but it goes through enemies and ricochets. So you can hit multiple targets, whereas Death Ray is only single target. So we're just going to ignore all those spells by the stairs and zap some snakes, free some villagers. You can tell what kind of damage is being dealt by the color of the number that pops up. In this case, we're doing magic damage. Idu's going to summon us a water servant. Thanks, buddy. Etched on the castle floor, we have the Latin for Make My Day. Because this is a classy game of mass ASCII slaughter. Hovering over myself with the mouse, I can see that I have 12 HP and no resistances whatsoever. And I'm just going to make my way to level 3. 
Here's one of the two spells that every character gets, which is Recall. It brings all of your friends over to you. The level generation times in this game are fairly long for a roguelike, which is to say there are any at all. And now Rambo time. The red, green, and blue around your triangle indicates the 10 seconds of invincibility time you get at the beginning of every level. And during this time, you can melee attack and cast spells, but they can't hurt you. So the best thing to do is just run in there and get in as much free damage as possible. We run up against our first spell casting enemy, the Nomad Priest. They have that fire arrow spell. Like most spells, you can just jump over it or move out of the way, since projectiles in this game are fairly slow. As you can see with our friendly paladin, friends and enemies can jump, not just you. I like the way that when they jump, they get all big, like they're coming closer to the camera. It's kind of a funny little 3D touch to what's pretty much entirely a 2D game. Let's take a look at the stats on the friendly villagers. They have 3 HP, and they're weak to death. Really shouldn't all living things be weak to death? I suppose villagers are just more death prone than adventures is what the game's trying to get across. I like that actually, it's the game mechanics telling the story rather than exposition. Instead of telling you a bunch of villagers died, just stick a bunch in the game and make them very easy to kill. Those green arrows are some kind of buff, the game doesn't really give any information on what kind. I do is going to try and summon some more buddies, but there's only three summons per character allowed. And look at that orc go. He can jump really high. Somewhere in the air, he gets hit by a charm beam from one of our friends, and you can see that he's on our side by the blue outline around his health bar. One neat thing about this game is it doesn't just use colors to differentiate between creatures of the same ladder, but different fonts. You can see the villagers are a very drab sort of V, whereas the Valkyries are a nice little serifed number. This is your basic map screen, uh, it should be fairly self-explanatory. You're the at sign in reference to pretty much every roguelike ever in which you're not a triangle or some kind of sprite. This is tactical mode, you basically hit F2 and you can see the name of everything. It's a very good way to just kind of get your bearings. Now we're going to have a nice little bit of mass chaos, some fighting, spells flying everywhere, summon familiars, cats and dogs living together, and I'm just going to ignore it and run around and grab some power-ups. Bonus melee damage isn't as great as you might think, since melee is pretty much always a bad idea when you're not invincible. Magic in this game is just so much better. ABC, always be casting. ABC always be cash grabbing. Summon Fire Sprite is a nice pickup. ABC always be conjuring. I can't summon the Fire Sprites right now because I'm already past my summon limit from the crusade I cast earlier. We head down here, find an NPC that you can talk to, but we're not going to because there's a trap in the way. Instead, we're going to do everyone's favorite thing to do in roguelikes, which is run around until we find the exit. Luckily, the exit is right up here. You can see those downstairs peeking up from the bottom of the top of the screen. We got a shrine. There's a ton of these. They all have different effects. I'm not going to look up what they all do during the gameplay, even though it would be beneficial, because that just breaks flow. Same thing with the Trianglopedia they refer to, a uh, lot of good information, not very fun to watch. And Rambo time again. Nice little bank shot here. 
And we made it to level 2. Leveling up does a couple things. It gives you extra HP, and the next time you get to the downstairs, it gives you a talent, which shows up in one of those dialogue boxes that you don't see. You get a choice of three talents, or you can take one completely at random. Evaporate Wall is another really nice spell to have. I'll show that off for you. It does that. And the reason I jumped there is because that explosion can kill you, and in fact it has killed me. On the other end, I've also lost games where an enemy summoned a wall right in front of the only path to the exit. And I was basically screwed because I didn't have Evaporate Wall. These guys jumping towards us are Arox, and they're not ASCII at all. They're some kind of strange Unicode symbol. My best guess would be some kind of Arabic punctuation. Or maybe it's just a really strangely stylized division sign? I don't know. Those little shaded squares in that alcove are ice and water. I'll leave it to you to figure out which is which from the colors. And we got some Knoll Elders. These guys cast Magic Missile. And I can't jump out of the way because my jump bar is depleted from running. Which is the other use of that yellow bar. You can tell your allies who to attack. I just sent them to attack the Knoll Elder, which they took care of very quickly. We're doing this little loop around. We're going to head down to the next level. And there's going to be another one of those dialogue boxes that you can't see giving me my choice of talents, and I choose the talent that increases my Shadow Bolt damage, because that's a spell I use a lot. Every spell has a talent associated with it, and you're more likely to be offered the talents for spells that you've already picked up, which is one reason not to pick up spells you're not going to use, because then you're going to be offered talents that improve them, and you don't really need those talents. Incidentally, Triangle Wizard Day is a real thing. You get uh, a special ring if you play on October 27th. Now here we've got a trap that's that little circle with an X in it with the green dot circling it. Traps just cast a spell at regular intervals. And there, that one just went off and cla cast glass shards. This is your spellbook screen. It shows you what spells you have, what their quick select number is, what letter accesses them, their level, how many copies you have, and if they regenerate, how long it takes to regenerate one copy. You can see there are a ton of spells. We've got a few only. We all have them bound to our quick select bar, which you get to by pressing the number keys or using the scroll bar. I usually prefer the latter. Now I'm just going to stand there, attack these moon clans, exposing myself to that trap. Luckily I get out of the way before it goes off. I mean, skillfully I get out of the way before it goes off. The box with an eye in it is an item. You can carry one item per level you have. But before I get that item, I'm going to be attacked by crows. Crows, luckily, are weak enough that you can just melee them to death. Which is good because they fly over your spells. You pick up that unidentified volge. Just hang around traps some more. This lovely little light shows the charm spell, which I so skillfully randomly resist. Here's your inventory screen, gonna equip this unidentified volge. It's got a couple free sockets, which are for gems. I'm not sure if gems are even implemented yet. Item identification in this game is not a big deal. You just pay a shopkeeper a small fee and they'll tell you what an item is. 
I don't really feel like fighting all these flying enemies, so I'm just going to run to the exit. Which brings us to our first boss level. I'm going to summon some fire sprites in preparation. I can summon three of them total. These guys are level 22, which is pretty substantial. And here's our first boss. This is Umbar. He's the adventurer that came into the castle before you, and he's mad that you caught up to him. This isn't a real tough fight. He can summon some birds, but my fire sprites and death ray spam take care of them in quick order. He drops some gold and a weapon that is actually identified. So I'm just going to equip that. It gives me extra knockback, which is... Pretty good because if the opponent starts meleeing you, you get to melee them back, and knocking them back will get them out of the way so you can run to a safe spellcasting distance. Tune in next time for the further adventures of Melon.